Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 8, Working with Rates on the Calculator. So in this first unit in Math 7, we've been working with ratios, rates, multiplication, division, all of that. In the last lesson, we also looked at just simply how to use a calculator, you know, how to push the buttons and things like that. Today's lesson, we're finally going to be doing some work with ratios and rates, but instead of doing all the multiplication and division longhand, we're going to be using the calculator to do it. It's that simple. So make sure that you've got a calculator handy that can do multiplication, division, all those things that we've been doing, all right, because we're going to be using it to get the final answers to many of these problems. Let's jump right into it with exercise number one, right? Now, Small rounding review, because a lot of times in the real world when we do calculations, we have to round our final answers. So no need for the calculator at this point, let's take a look at exercise one. Given the number 352.6385, round this number to each of the following. All right, let's just do this together. Rounding is all about saying which number a particular number is closest to given a certain level of accuracy. So if I want to round this particular number to the nearest tenth, let me write it down, 352.6385, that doesn't look like a decimal point, it looks like a dying duck, right? I want to round to the nearest tenth, right? That's that six digit right there, right? Then I look at the three. Right? I look at the next digit to the right. If that digit is a 5 or more, I'm going to round that 6 up to a 7. If that digit is a 4 or less, and I don't care about anything out here, nothing out here matters, it's just that one, then I'm going to keep it as a 6. Since that's a 3, this is 352.6. And the whole idea by the way, the whole idea is simply the fact that this number is closer to 352.6 than it is to 352.7. That's it, right? Which one of those is it closer to? It's closer to 352.6 because that 3 is not halfway or closer to the 0.7. All right, let's do it to the nearest hundred. Notice, not hundredth, hundred right? Well, in that case, if we've got 352.6385, this is the hundred decimal. So I look at that five, and that tells me it's the nearest hundred. This is 400. Again, simply put, this number is closer to 400 than it is to 300. Now we're back to the thus. I want it to the nearest hundredth and the nearest thousandth. Why don't you go ahead and round to those levels of accuracy and then we'll go through them. All right. Well, in a decimal, the first decimal places is tenths, then hundredths, then thousandths, then ten thousandths, then a hundred thousandths, then millionths, ten millionths, etc. So, if I want to round to the nearest hundredth, right, the hundredth place is my three, right? I look at the decimal place one afterwards, that's an eight. So that means I'm going to round this number to 352.64. Likewise, if I want to the nearest thousandth, let me get rid of all of that, here is my thousandth place. I look at that 5, since that 5 is at 5 or above, I will now also round that up to 352.639. All right. So just a little bit of rounding review because we're going to see some rounding in this particular lesson and we're certainly going to see some rounding throughout this year. All right. So let's keep going. Calculators with messy rate problems. All right. Now we're going to bring out the calculator when we need it. It's sitting down below here for right now. Make sure you have yours handy. Let's take a look at exercise number two. At a gas station, gasoline costs $3.39 or 3.39 per gallon. Laura puts 14.38 gallons of gasoline into her car. 
Give an expression for how much Laura spends on gas. Evaluate this expression on your calculator. Give all decimals. All right, so this is simple enough. We have a rate, 3.39 per gallon. We have a number of gallons, 14.38 gallons. When we find their product, that's gonna tell us how many dollars we have. So it's simple enough, right? Our actual expression will be 3.39 per gallon times 14.38 gallons. All right, that's our expression. Now, in previous courses and previous lessons, you would have done this product longhand, and it would have taken a while. But now, with our graphing calculator, sorry, just with our calculator, we can now just say, well, I've got 3.39 times 14 0.38, enter, that's going to be 48.7482. All right, now letter B, All right, this is our, our product. Letter B asks, what should you round your answer in A to, and why? So I want you to think about this a little bit, right? My final answer right, is 48.7482, but I shouldn't leave it that way. What should I round it to? Pause the video for a moment and write down what you think is the correct level of rounding. All right, sometimes the real world gives us all the context we need, right? This answer is an amount of money. And obviously, we should never let an amount of money have more than two decimal places, at least in our system, right? Because we're talking about dollars and cents. We don't have $48.74 and another 82, whatever that would be, right? So we should round to the nearest hundredth because it's money. Right? And specifically, we should say that it is $48.75. All right? We should round to the nearest hundredth. So that four should become a five due to the eight bumping it up. Let's take a look at the second part of this problem. Letter C. Or maybe that's the third part of this problem. I don't know. Whatever. Let me move this out of the way so we can read it. Letter C says, Georgina filled up her car at a different gas station and saw the following readout. In other words, the total sale was $49.38 and she got 13.642 gallons of gas. How much did the gas cost in dollars per gallon that Georgina put in her car? Show the calculation you used and round to an appropriate level. All right, well, now we wanna know the dollars per gallon. Right now we're looking for a ratio, dollars per gallon. Specifically, we're looking at 49.38 dollars divided by 13.642 gallons. Now this would be a beast to do by hand, but on the calculator it should end up being quite simple. Let's just bring our calculator up and let's do 49.38 divided by 13.642, enter, and we get this ugliness, like 3.6197, et cetera. Now let's talk about this just for a second. Okay, so what, what did we find? We actually found the price per gallon, specifically the dollars per one gallon. So what we wanna do is again, we wanna round this to the nearest hundredth. Specifically, what we're gonna say is that this is $3.62 per gallon. $3.62 Per gallon. Let's take a look at letter D. Let's see what that thing says. Georgina's car can drive 34.5 miles per gallon of gasoline it uses. 
How far, to the nearest mile, can Georgina drive on the gasoline she put in her car? All right, what I'd like you to do is think about this problem, set up a calculation, whether that's a product, quotient, a sum, a difference, whatever you think is correct, and then try to come up with the number of miles that Georgina can drive, use your calculator to do any of the messy calculations, all right, and it looks like round it to the nearest mile. Take a few minutes to do that. All right, well, we know that Georgina put in 13.642 gallons, and she can drive at 34.5 miles per gallon. So there's our rate, 34.5 miles for every gallon of gas we have. We have 13.642 gallons, so it's going to be a product. Specifically, we're gonna have, eh, let's do this, 34.5, miles per gallon times 13.642 gallons. That's just how much she put in. Now, of course, we're gonna let our calculator do the messy work here. Let's clear out that last calculation. We're gonna have 34.5 miles per gallon times 13 0.642 gallons, enter, and we get 470.649 miles. It asks us to round to the nearest mile. Since that six is bigger than a five, we get 471 miles. And that's a reasonable amount to round to it would be kind of silly if we kept all those decimal places. Again, the real math here is actually understanding that it should be a product, right? The calculator then evaluates that product for us, which makes our lives a lot easier. All right, let's wrap this up. Oh, actually, no, we've got some more, we've got some more problems to do. I don't know why I thought that was the end. Let's take a look at exercise number three. Zeke is trying to determine the weight of 52 gallons of water in his fish tank. He takes a five gallon bucket that weighs 1.81 pounds when empty and fills it with five gallons of water. The total weight of the bucket and the water is 43.56 pounds. Using the information given, what is the weight of water in pounds per gallon? All right, so we'd like to just figure out how much does a gallon of water weigh? Right? And of course, the way that we can do that is figuring out how much you know, five gallons of water weighs and then dividing it by five. Now, one of the problems is the total weight of the bucket and the water is 43.56 pounds. So first thing we need to know is just how much does the water weigh? And to do that, we have to get rid of the 1.81 pounds that the bucket weighs. Now that's simple enough, right? We can just do 43. 0.56 minus 1.81. We could certainly do that by hand, but you know, kind of the point here is we've got the calculator. So we've got 43. Uh oh, that's not what I want. Yeah, let's trash that. 43.56 minus 1.81. Enter. And 41.75 is the weight of the water. So we have 41.75 pounds of water. Now what we want to do is we want to divide that by the fact that we have four, we have five gallons of water, right? So this isn't 41.75 pounds of water per gallon. That would be very heavy water. This is 41.75 pounds of water for five gallons of water, right? So we're now gonna do 41.75 divided by five. And of course, what we're getting here is a unit rate. Let me just do a little line like this. Let me move this out here. So what we've got is 41.75 divided by five. And that tells us that the weight of water is 8.3 pounds, oops, 
pounds per gallon. All right, simple enough. Letter B then says, how much will 52 gallons of water weigh given your answer to A? All right, well, we know that every gallon of water weighs 8.3 pounds, right? We've got 52 gallons of water. Why don't you go ahead and write down a calculation, actually write down what calculation you're gonna use, and then find out how many pounds that 52 gallons of water will weigh. All right, let's do it. So the calculation is a product. We have 52 gallons times 8.35 pounds per gallon. And we're gonna let the calculator do that work for us. All right, so clear this out. 52 gallons times 8.35 pounds per gallon. Enter gives us 434.2 pounds. Pretty heavy. But then again, if you've ever tried to move a large aquarium, they are pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. All right, 434.2 pounds. Excellent. Let's keep going and do one final problem. This is definitely the last problem. All right, let's take a look. Exercise number four. A maple tree grew to 33 inches tall in its first four years. Letter A asks us, what is the growth rate of the maple tree in inches per year? All right, so what we're looking for here is a unit rate. What I'd like you to do is pause the video right now, set up that unit rate as a division problem or as a fraction, then change it into division, then use your calculator to actually evaluate what the decimal version of the growth rate is. All right, we've got 33 inches per four years. So literally, 33 inches per four years. Now, to actually figure out what that is though, we're gonna bring our calculator up clear it on out, 33. If this was a nice number, like 32 divided by four, fine. But 33 divided by four is a little bit of an uglier number. And in fact, it ends up being 8.25 inches per year, our unit rate. The tree is growing 8.25 inches for every year. Letter B, if the maple tree grows at this rate for an additional, how many years? I don't know, the calculator's covering it up. Grows for an additional 20 years, will it be taller than 15 feet? Show the calculations that you use to find your answer. Now, this can be a little tricky, so I'd like you to spend a bit of time thinking about this. You have everything that you need, just one little hint, don't forget right, that it's 33 inches tall after the first four years, and now it's gonna grow an additional 20 years. Pause the video now and see if this tree is taller than 15 feet. All right, well first, let's just see how far or how much it grows in those 20 additional years. Well, we know it's growing 8.25 inches per year, we're gonna multiply by 20 years. Let's just come here, right? So we've got 8.25 inches per year times 20 years. Let the calculator take care of the, the number crunching for us. 8.25 inches per year times 20 years enter, and we find that it grows 165 inches. Now, that's just how much it grew in those 20 years, right? 
but it started off at 33 inches. So we're going to want to add another 33 to this. This I can do without my calculator. And I'm going to be at 198 inches after 20 years. Now the question though is, will it be taller than 15 feet, right? Inches, feet, two different units. But at this point, you are of course expected to know that every foot has 12 inches in it, right? That's a ratio slash unit rate all by itself. 12 inches per one foot. So if I want to convert this to feet instead of inches, I am now going to divide by 12 inches per foot. And we'll do that again on the calculator. 198 divided by 12, enter, and that gives us 16.5 five feet, and so the answer is yes. All right, the question was, is it above 15 feet? And the answer is yes. Now, by the way, if you neglect the 33 inches that it's at after 14 years, then the answer would end up being no. It would actually fall short of 15 feet by a couple of feet, or at least by a foot. All right, so be careful of that when you're working a problem like this. All right, final little piece. If the tree continues to grow at this rate, how many years will it take for the tree to reach a height of 30 feet, round to the nearest year? All right, again, I'd like you to think about this a little bit. You know that it's growing at 8.25 inches per year. I'd like to know how many years it's gonna take to get to a height of 30 feet to the nearest year. Pause the video now and see if you can use a calculation plus the calculator to figure this out. All right, well, because we have this mismatch in units, the first thing I wanna do is figure out what 30 feet is in terms of inches. And that's, of course, quite simple, right? All I have to do, take my calculator, 30 feet, times 12 inches, enter. So 30 feet equals 360 inches. So what I really wanna know is how long it's gonna take for this tree to grow to 360 inches. Well, we know that it grows at 8.25 inches per year. So the calculation I need is 360 inches divided by 8.25 inches per year. And again, on the calculator, let's see what we've got. 360 divided by 8.25, enter. That gives us 43.25. 636, six, etc., and to the nearest year, that'll be 44 years. All right, 44 years. So if you got that, fantastic. It, get, it means you've got a good sense for units, a good sense for dividing by a rate to find some kind of a total, and you have a good start on how to use the calculator as well. Let's wrap this up. All right, maybe get my calculator out of there. So today what we did is we looped back and we worked with ratios and rates yet again, mostly rates, but we used the calculator to do all the messy things, to do the division, the multiplication, especially when it came to decimals, that made life a lot, lot easier, all right? Mostly what we wanted to do was get practice on the ideas that are involved in rates and also on how to use the calculator. All right, we're gonna do a lot more of this as we go into further units in this course. For now, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and as always, keep thinking and keep solving problems.